Hey YouTube, David Staples, back with another video. So today we're going to be talking about one of many different acronyms. You know, there's a lot of acronyms in the IT world. Uh, today we're going to be talking about specifically DNS, the Domain Name System. As you can see here, this is one of the websites I own, CheapQuiz.com. Again, this is not even a comprehensive list. I'm still working on adding acronyms to it. It's a fairly new addition to the site. But again, we are going to be focusing on DNS, the Domain Name System. So what is DNS? What is the Domain Name System? So DNS is basically what resolves a name down to an IP address. We know that every host on the internet has an IP address, right? This is basically what allows us to communicate with, say, Google.com or Facebook.com uh, on an IP level because they each have IP addresses. Uh, same with any other favorite websites that you might be visiting. You know, if you're watching this video on YouTube, obviously, since I'm uploading it to YouTube, YouTube has really more than one IP address. But for our purposes, we're just going to say an IP address. And so your computer needs to be able to communicate with that other server, right, or with another computer. So we need a way to kind of coordinate that name and basically associate it with the IP address. And that's basically what the domain name system does. So why do we need something like this? People say, well, you know, we don't have that for phone numbers. Well, we kind of do. You know, you look at your smartphone, which, you know, I've got mine right here. Uh, think about how many telephone numbers you actually know from your contacts list. You know, maybe one, two, five, ten. You know, ten's probably on the high end for most people these days. You know, I know personally, I know my fiance's telephone number. I know my dad's telephone number. I know Delta's customer service number, which you know, is only because it's such an easy number, and I do call them on a somewhat regular basis to make modifications to reservations or change my flights or whatever else, which, by the way, it's one 800 323 if anyone happens to need to call Delta anytime soon. Um, but this DNS basically is what helps us associate that name with the IP address. You know, continuing down that line, let's say that you're watching the news, or you're watching just some sort of TV show, whether it's you know The 100 or Game of Thrones or any other sort of show. And Game of Thrones I don't think has ads because that's on HBO, right? But let's just say that an ad pops up. It says, you know, for more information on this product, go to 64.224.40.172. And, of course, you're sitting there pulling out pen and paper going, okay, that was 60 what? Um, okay, I'm going to need you to repeat that because I don't remember everything that you just said. Or you probably wrote it down wrong, right? And unless you've got, like, a TiVo or some other sort of DVR to actually rewind, you're not going to be able to catch that. Same thing listening to the radio. You know, they talk about some sort of a, uh, a new product that you really are interested in. Of course, you know, you're not going to have time to sit there and write down an IP address. And what are the chances that you're going to remember the IP address anyways? So you know, IPv4, of course, that's fairly important, but especially as we get into IPv6. And have you seen these IPv6 addresses? Anyone out there remember any IPv6 addresses just right off the top of your head? Now, yes, I'm sure some of you sysadmins and whatnot probably can remember a few of them, and that's totally fine. Me personally, I don't have any of them memorized whatsoever. So, you know, being able to remember these IP addresses just obviously isn't going to happen, especially as we start visiting more and more websites. You, know, you think about the number of websites you might visit on a regular basis. You might have, you know, Facebook and YouTube and Twitter, uh, various other social media. If you're, if you watch the news, you've got things like Fox News or CNN or MSNBC. Uh, you might have Yahoo. Uh, E-Trade, you know, if you do any sort of stock trading. Uh, you know, so there's lots and lots and lots of different IP addresses out there, and I certainly can't remember them all. I can't even hardly remember telephone numbers. So this is where DNS comes in handy. So DNS has been around for quite some time. Uh, actually, you can see uh, way, way back, we actually started way back in the day using a host.txt file, uh, and this was basically part of ARPANET. And... Thankfully, it has evolved to where we don't necessarily just all have to synchronize this big host.txt file. Now, you can imagine having to actually download this huge list of hosts that are associated with IP addresses to your computer, right? Well, of course, you know, way back in the day, if I think back to the days of when I had my 286s or 386 or you know, even going back as far as the XT, you know, I had, you know, what, maybe a 4 meg hard drive, I think, in the XT and maybe a 20 meg hard drive in my 286. So by the time we start adding the number of hosts that we have on today's internet, 
you know, it's not real likely that we're going to have enough space uh, for all that list of hosts, you know, especially when we start looking at all the various different TLDs these days with you know .guru and .finance and .airlines and all these other uh, .whatever else. So of course our computers actually do still have something very similar to this host.txt uh, file, so you do have a host file still, but of course this is more used for local uh, domain resolution rather or name resolution rather than for internet wide. And granted you can use it for standard computer uh, for the rest of the internet type of domain names and everything, most people do not. So again, DNS is basically what helps us resolve these names down to an IP address. So we're not going to get into things like DNSSEC and uh, the various different types of DNS records. I will create another video for those specifically as we get into various other acronyms. Uh, but for now, I hope this helps you remember uh, kind of what this DNS stands for. Uh, by the way, it operates on port 53. So for when you're memorizing your ports for whatever exam it is, you do want to remember that port 53 UDP is typically what DNS uses. Now, it can use TCP for things like zone transfers and whatnot, as you can see here on Wikipedia. But again, 53 is definitely the number that you'll want to remember for things like your A+, Network+, Security+, uh, maybe some Cisco exams or, or whatever else the case may be. So anyhow, I hope you found this video helpful and look forward to making more videos about uh, some of these other acronyms as well as going into a little bit more detail uh, with some of these DNS type topics uh, such as the A records and C name records and pointer records and, and what types of uh, tasks that those accomplish. But uh, look forward to seeing you in a future videos. But in the meantime, click on that subscribe button down below, leave a comment down there, and be sure to click on that like or thumbs up button. And we will see you very soon. You guys take care.